After Chelsea's loss to Liverpool in the Carabao Cup final, they have now been named the Blue Billion Pound Bottle Jobs by Gary Neville. So I've decided to take them into a rebuild on Football Manager 2024. I'm going to give myself five years with a rebuild and I'm going to see if I can bring some success back to Chelsea. Just before we get into the video, i really appreciate if you could like and subscribe as we have got a goal of 50 subscribers on a massive amount, but if we could get to 50, I'd really appreciate it. Now let's get into the video. So for season one, I've only brought in one player who is uh, Dominic Calvert-Lewin. 51 million, not a bad price. Just needed a bit more firepower up front and I couldn't get the man I actually wanted who was obviously man. I just didn't have the money at the time. This is the formation we're going to use going into the season, playing a 4-2-4 but with uh, one of the CMs dropping back deeper as a DM. And this is the best team we've got available at the minute. Obviously, well actually, I forgot to register Calvert-Lewin but when he comes in, uh, he will go into the team. That is the team that we've got so far, let's see how it gets on towards the end of season 1. I've just stopped in January because it wasn't going very well. There was a little bit of a lack of summer going on. So I've brought in some players, tried to switch it up. I have signed Diego Costa, Tadebo, and uh, Victor Ossiman, who I actually wanted at the beginning of the season, who I couldn't afford at the time. And obviously this was due to Todd Bowley splashing a bit more cash. And I was able to sell Cucurella, Saar, and uh, Trevor Chalibur as well. Went to Al Etihad for 60 million, which I couldn't really turn down because there was a lot of money and it basically paid for Osman. Definitely, well, it, paid, it paid for Diego Costa, who's a massive improvement over Robert Sanchez. Just want to do a quick stop there, and then we'll see you at the end of season one now. Right then, so we've come back at the end of season one, and as we can see, seventh. It's not great. It's not great at all. But we have at least got European football, which could help out just a little bit, maybe to keep the job. Taking a look at the player stats, Dominic Calvert Lewin seemed to be a good signing, to be honest. 23 goals, top goal scorer by quite some way, very good average rating. Aussie men with only half a season, 10 in 17, pretty good return. And Kuku when he come back from injury, pretty good return. Main disappointment, Mudrick, not surprised. And Nicholas Jackson, not ideal. Not ideal at all. Now looking at the average rating altogether, it looks good further up the pitch. Diego Costa halfway through seems to be a good signing because if we can find Robert Sanchez, he's a little bit lower. I know Robert Sanchez doesn't always have the potential to become a great player on this game. In the competitions, it doesn't look like we did very well in any of them at all. Fifth round out by Palace, lost 2-0 at home, not good. Third round by Leicester, 4-1. Maybe it's my tactic I need to look at. Anyway, at the end of the season, looks like they gave us quite a healthy budget. 78 million for the next season. Hopefully, we can turn this team around and potentially finish top four next season. Season one wasn't quite what we hoped for, but with a healthy budget, hopefully we can build a team that can work our way into the Champions League and maybe win some silverware along the way. But we'll see how that goes. I'll see you at the start of season two. So we have had a major focus on defence in this transfer window. Bringing in some great young talent, two from Atalanta, Scalavini and uh, Rigueri, and then Diamande from Sporting. All quite high prices, except from Rigueri, uh, Rigueri. Not too bad, but it's what you got to pay for the best young players in the game. And I feel like it probably fits uh, Chelsea's actual transfer policy at the minute. As you can see from the outs, obviously Lewis Hall was already a one made in real life. Got Harvey Bale for 10, just not really good enough. The goalkeeper obviously brought in Diego Costa, so it is one that probably needed to be made just to free up some space for other players. It's either between him or Robert Sanchez. 
Thiago Silva wanted to leave for Brazil, which I actually accepted an offer for Brazil. And he said no. So he's gone back to France. The tactics most likely going to stay the same. Hopefully the only thing I've really changed is I've changed right back to an inverted wing back just to overload this space really. Hopefully the improvements in the defence can power us higher in the league, hoping for a top four this season. Being realistic, probably Chelsea fans in real life would be delighted with a top four next season. If I am to pick without restriction, best 11, this would be the team which realistically is the sort of team I'd look to play. Obviously I've kept Lukaku when he's come back because it just gives a bit more depth up front helping with these two. So yeah, this is the team going into season two and hopefully brings us some success in the league. We have got the Europa League to play for as well. Maybe we could win a trophy this season, but let's see how we get on. Right, so we've come back at the end of the season and we've finished top four, which is a massive, massive improvement. So 78 this season, only one off second, 59 last season. That's a 19 point improvement, just for people who are struggling with the match. Looking at the squad, obviously the three strikers contributed with most of the goals, alongside players who would have played on the wing. Uh, Mudrick with 17 assists, which is actually quite good. Then if we're going off average rating, was Kepa, obviously he only played five games, but Sterling highest was 7.3. Oxyman, 52 games, he got a 7.22, which is very good, alongside with 36 goals and 4 assists. So that's 40 goal contributions, 52 games, that's pretty good. Generally across the whole squad, you can see a lot more improvement with the players. Average rating for everyone, pretty much over a 7. So far, I've had to stop just before the Club World Championship as well. I have actually made a signing so far. Got Nicolas Gonzalez coming in for a pretty good price. Now looking at the competitions, we actually won a cup competition this year, the Carabao Cup, which is funny considering they just lost it. Across the other competitions, see that we're knocked out in the quarterfinal by Brentford, knocked out in the semi-final by Newcastle, so they've got the Club World Championship to play, so we'll probably see that at the end of the transfer window how we did. Right, so coming into the third season now, uh, as you can see in the Club World Championship, we actually finished third, narrowly missed out on the final with a loss to Bayern Munich. So far in the Premier League, we have beat Fulham at home, which is expected, really, uh, and lost away to Man United 3-1. Isn't ideal, but it's one of them where I'd rather loss probably come there than against someone like, I don't know, Leicester. So for the transfers, obviously this is one that was made in real life. See, bought, you know, Chelsea bought a 16 year old and he's come when he's 18. Uh, and big signing. Cratchy's Zelly. Yeah. Anyway, 150 million. Big, big price tag. I have broke the record for Chelsea. But he's a massive improvement to the team. Uh, we have let go of a few players just to bring in some money. And there were some players that wanted to go out on loan who weren't really being used. And I probably might sell next season. So the tactic is staying the same as it was a massive improvement last year. If I select without restriction the best 11, this is the team that we get. And yeah. After the Carabao Cup win, hopefully we can push on, maybe challenge for the title. We were a few points off after, uh, last season and hopefully do well in the Champions League as well. So let's get to simulating and I'll see you at the end of season three. Right, we're at the end of season three now and a bit of a disappointing end. You can actually see that we finished fourth, although only four points off the top, which was a three-way tie. Arsenal edging it just on goal difference. Looking at the competitions, Champions League, first season back, 
knocked out in the round 16 by Man United, knocked out by Man City, knocked out by Bristol City. Bristol City is an ideal. The other two isn't so bad, they're hard teams, but should be doing better than this. Looking at the squad for the season, Lukaku actually scored the most goals. And unfortunately, he is leaving on a free, which I must have obviously not come back in time or want offered him a contract. Ossiman up there with 20 as well, but is reduced. Raheem Sterling had a good return. Uh, Calvert Lewin, obviously, quite disappointing. He played a lot of games and only got seven goals. As we can see for the transfer budget for next season, we have got 89 million. So I think something really needs to work. Might need a change of formation as well, but we'll see at the start of season four. Right, so we've come to the end of the transfer window, season four. We have brought in three pretty big players. We've got Evan Ferguson. He obviously isn't cheap, but he'll be a good player to get. Edda Militao just strengthens up that defence a bit more at quite a good price for the player he is. And I went for a different direction, as you might tell with the tactic, because I've got a cam in, in verts. Again, high amount, but that's what you pay for these great players. On the outs, uh, Badishili, gone for a decent amount to Man United. Dominic Calvert-Lewin out for 80 million which obviously helped me afford these players getting in as we've only got a net spend of just under 40 million, 38 million. Yeah, we sold Cole Palmer as well because he I've never seen Cole Palmer grow on this game. Uh, Tadebo as well, just because he didn't fit into the squad anymore. And Nicholas Jackson has gone out on loan just because he wasn't being used, so I might as well get him used somewhere else. Looking at the new tactic for the season, we can see defence is pretty much the same. Uh, we changed one of the DMs to a, a Segundo Volante on attack. And then obviously we brought back Cam in on uh, support. Left winger is now a winger on attack for uh, Castrovelli. And up front by themselves as an advanced forward. If we do a pick without restriction, the best 11, this is the team that shows which is a very strong team, I believe. Regeri's actually overtaken uh, Ben Chilwell now, which he has been performing very well in the last few seasons, so I'm not entirely surprised by that. So far, every game this season as well, as we can see, all greens, including the friendlies. Uh, we've got three clean sheets in the league so far. Obviously, Plymouth expected to win that. Tottenham 2-0 is a good result. Man United 4-3, bit of a struggle there, but high goals again Everton 9-0 I think this is the highest win I've had so far in this rebuild and as you can see high domination XG extremely high they didn't even have a shot on target ossiman has got a hat trick everyone's played amazing so currently we sit top of the league winning all four games uh, with a 17 goal difference so let's simulate to the end of the season and hopefully after this amazing start this is a season where we can really bring in some silverware, even challenge for the title, hopefully win it. So yeah, we'll see you at the end of the season. Right, so we've come to the end of season four, and we can already see that we've just narrowly missed out on the league. That loss and a draw actually to Arsenal as well, and 2-2 two -two to Burnley. If we win that game against Burnley, we win the league on goal difference so that is really what's cost us there in other competitions semi-final of the champions league as well lost out to barcelona Let's see <laughs> villa <laughs> what are they doing there oh god villa knocked out real madrid jesus i must have won 1-0 at home and then lost 3-0 at the camp now again we have won the carabao cup which is nice, but it's not the biggest trophy to win. And the FA Cup as well, we're out early again, Wolverhampton. So in the Premier League, let's just look. Scored 111 goals, so there's a massive improvement in goals. Scored 15 against Everton, bless them. Only conceding 35 as well, so big improvement in defence. Goal difference was massive above everyone else, but losses all away from home. Drew one at home so obviously we got nearly maximum points at home but our away form is just 
just let us down just a little bit. And them draws there only took two points off Brighton this season, who finished 13th. Drawn to Fulham, who got relegated. Drawn to Burnley, finished bottom. One of their 12 points was against me. So looking at squad and how they did, Ossiman had a great season. 48 goals in 48 games. 45 starting, 5 assists. Uh, average rating is higher than it's ever been. Uh, Mudrick had a good season, considering he came off the bench a lot. So did Cachavelli. Fernandez in that Secundo Valente role got quite a few goals and quite a few assists. Sterling 21 assists is brilliant. Wurtz 21 assists is brilliant. It's exactly what I wanted from Wurtz. Diamande even chipped in with eight goals. Evan Ferguson only got Evan Ferguson only played 13 games. Was he injured or did Osimhen just play every single minute? I mean, he had a few injuries, but nothing really. He just didn't really get the game time, I guess. We've got one last go at it. Let's see how if we can bring anyone in, change the team up a little bit. I'm not sure if it's needed. Maybe it was just a little bit unlucky this season, but we'll see how it goes. I'll see you at the end of the transfer window in Season 5. So to start off Season 5, we're going to have a quick look at the transfers I've done for the final season. The first one we made for the season, we got in Joshua Kimmich from Al Halil on a free. Very good transfer, very good player. Sort of gives a lot more depth at that um, defensive mid role. Can also play various positions. We let go of one big player, Giorgio Scalavini. PSG. It was 170 million. When I got the offer, I couldn't really turn it down, considering there's probably players I could get better than him at centre back for cheaper. And that's just what I did after going on stats wise. I looked at Upper Mencano, got him in for 75 million. So far, he's played pretty well. And with most of that money as well, we brought in Jude Bellingham, an actual big, big superstar. Green attributes everywhere. Just fantastic. Five star, according to whoever summarized him. So far, he has got one goal and three assists, got an average rating of 7.8. He's doing pretty well. The formation is going to stay the exact same because there was a massive improvement last season, especially to uh, Aussie men up front. A lot more was provided to him. And with the quality that I've brought in, hopefully it will bring more goals and a bit more defensive structure as well. So if we pick without restriction for our best 11, this is the team that shows. Doesn't even actually put Bellingham into the team, which is surprising. But trust me, he will be playing. So far on the schedule, just like last season, wins all around. Big win at home to Newcastle. Can be a tough game. Let's see how that went. They scored late on, so 4-2. Joshua Kimmich with 2 on his debut, which is pretty good for him. Then we beat Brighton. Ossiman with another goal. Joshua Kimmich with another two goals. Then Kimmich scored again. It looks like we actually got quite a tough league phase for the Champions League. With teams like PSG, Dortmund, Bilbao, not an easy place to, uh, team to play against. Porto and Liverpool as well. Who the other two? Villarreal and uh, Olympiacos. So hopefully we can get through that. And realistically for this season, for last season, I want to win at least a, either the Premier League and or the Champions League, if not both. Anyway, that's it for the start of the season. So I'll see you at the end of season five. Right, so we're here at the end of the season, and you've probably noticed that we've actually finally won the league. <laughs> finally, after five attempts. So we finished the season on 89 points, 90 goals down from last season, 40 conceded, only lost three all the way from home to Liverpool, Tottenham and Man City. Our highest top goal scorer in the league was actually Victor Osman, only on 15, which isn't the best. Looking at the player stats for the season, Osimhen only got 23 goals, which is a big decrease, nearly, well, it's less than half than last season. Uh, Joshua Kimmich, really good return, 17 and 16. Bellingham on 15 and 15, and Wurtz on 14 and 10. So the goals were definitely shared out a bit more. Obviously, we scored less goals. Looking at the average rating, it is this midfield three that really have 
shone this season. Surprisingly, we have got a lot lower average ratings throughout the squad, but we've managed to win the league. Got a lot of players unhappy as well. And this is probably due to, I noticed, we were knocked out in the playoff round by Manchester City in the Champions League. So we lost 8-9 on aggregate. Ugh. It's not great. However, we have done a domestic double winning the league and the FA Cup. So we have won the three trophies in England, which is a good success. That is success. Great success. For Chelsea, Chelsea fans right now, if they said where would we want to be in five years winning all three trophies in england i think they would happily 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 take that so yeah that was the chelsea rebuild and it's ended with us lifting the premier league title i'm gonna look at the leaderboard that i've just created as i want to do more rebuilds in the future and for the first time in a long time chelsea are top of the league wow i finished the rebuild with one league title and three domestic cups two Carabao and one FA Cup. Unfortunately, couldn't get any European trophies in. Finally, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like it. And if you want to see more, subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.